Hello, my name is Wade Nomura and this is Rotary Serving Our Community. Today we're going to take a look at the Rotary Club of Montecito and with us we have the president of the club, Bernadette Bagley. Welcome. Thanks, Wade. And also uh, Carrie uh, Murray. Thank you for joining both you, of us. Uh, we're going to start with you. Uh, tell us a little bit about yourself. Um, I've been here in Santa Barbara for about 30 years. I work in the software industry and uh, I've been involved with a number of nonprofits here in town, the Santa Barbara Scholarship Foundation and the Santa Barbara Museum of Natural History are two, two of the ones I've been with the longest. Oh, that's great. Good. And mostly uh, here in Santa Barbara then, that, that area. Yeah. Good. Definitely. Good. How about you, Carrie? Wade, I also live in Santa Barbara and I'm a member of the Montecito Rotary Club and I serve uh, in my day job as president of Shelterbox USA which is the Rotary International Project Partner for Disasters. So we go into emergency situations where family have, ha have lost everything. And working with Rotary, we help provide basic supplies, shelter and emergency supplies. So your um, job specific is for overall uh, United States, or is serve, it more specific yeah. for uh, Rotarians? I serve across the United States, and okay. I spend quite a deal, uh, a good deal of my time actually visiting Rotary clubs. Visiting but, Rotary but International. Not exclusive then, Rotary. It, it could be any club. It could be, it could be okay. any club, okay. sure. Oh, good. Mm -hmm. Outstanding. So um, we'll start with you there, Carrie. Sure. Tell us a little bit about your uh, Rotary history. So I actually uh, first was invited to the Montecito Rotary, actually, uh, to receive a grant as a volunteer. And I represent and still serve on the board of a great local nonprofit called Girls Rock and they empower girls through music. And I first learned about Rotary's participation with that when I went to receive the grant on behalf of the club. And I was just absolutely taken away from the first moment I walked in and just the feeling of community and fellowship and people that were there really committed to serving humanity. And it was after that meeting that I joined the Montecito Rotary. And I just, I just knew right away that, was, <laughs> that I wanted to be a Rotarian, but I also wanted to be a member of the Montecito Club. So how long have you been in Rotary? That was a year ago. A year ago, yeah, wow. So, wow. And I'm a newer member uh, just since the spring of this year. And I feel like I've really found my, my home, a, a big part of. So you're still yeah. definitely enjoying it then? I love it. <laughs> okay, love great. It. How about you, Bernadette? I've been with the club about two and a half years, but I'm actually a second generation Rotarian. Oh. My father was a member of the Rotary Club of downtown Stockton. Okay. And uh, so I had been to a Rotary meeting in high school, but hadn't really pursued it after that. And then um, I was invited to the Rotary Club of Montecito by someone I worked with and initially resisted it because I was worried <laughs> about spending that much time every week right. outside of the office. But it ended up being one of the nicest things I really look forward to the fellowship. I think that's what people find. I joined for kind of the aspirational aspects of the club, but a, a lot of the reason I stay is because I've, I've just made great friendships and met really interesting people. Now, you've only been a Rotary for a uh, little over two years? A little over two years. Wow, and you're already serving president. It was, yeah, a rapid <laughs> rise. Oh, that's uh, definitely so, unique. Yeah. <laughs> but congratulations. It's been, it's been great. It's been really interesting. Actually, being president, you get to meet a lot more people, get one-on-one one -on -one with the members, so uh, it's a great opportunity. Yeah, and, and meeting people well. you know, in other clubs and in, in the district has also been really great. It's given me a, a great chance to expand my network generally into industries that I don't normally have experience in, so it's True. been wonderful. And all very like-minded people, which makes it nice. <laughs> and the size of your club is? We're 41 people 41 now. 41 members, so, okay. And yeah. where do you meet? We meet at the Montecito Wine Bistro on okay. Tuesdays at noon. Perfect. Sounds so. good. So, and I'm sure anybody's invited, right? They're welcome anytime. And you <laughs> can always good. check out our website at MontecitoRotary.org. Oh, good. So good. that gives you the information on everything we're doing. Thank you. Um, and then how did you get involved, specific? You said you were invited in as a guest? I or? was invited uh, really as, at the, grant, the Fall Grants mm -hmm. Awards Ceremony. And there is an amazing local nonprofit. There's so many great nonprofits yeah. in this community, but one in particular that focuses on girls and helping build self-esteem in girls, Girls Rock. And so they had been the recipient of a 2015 grant. Oh. And so it was at that meeting that I really was kind of taken in by the Rotarians of the Montecito Club. And the rest is history. <laughs> and we're just, we're really privileged to have an incredible president like Bernadette, oh. and uh, she has, I'm sure, a, 
long, fast, she'll be fast tracked <laughs> in terms of ro rotary leadership, but she's just, she really keeps it interesting. She keeps it very engaging. We have incredible speakers every week from across the community and really across the world. Um, also, we have guests every week from, it always seems like there's a, oh, a, nice. there's a guest from Germany or Hong Kong and we really have a very global club. And I think it's also the types of people that come to Montecito and sure. come and learn about what we're doing. And it's also a very small club that, you know, I feel the 40 plus members, we really get to know each other sure. and I think work collectively to have an impact on our community and our world. And so yeah. it's, a, it's, it's a really exciting, thrilling piece to, to be a part of. And I think we're, it always feels like we're growing, you know. We, we it does. We have some younger members in the club which kind of keep things mm -hmm. exciting. They kind of have led us in terms of, you know, some of the new uh, fundraising efforts that we right. wanted to try. Um, we actually just did the anniversary of our grant giving. Our club has a foundation associated with it okay. that's funded by our club members. Okay. And so at our meeting last week, we granted uh, 21 grants to local nonprofits in the community. Wow. So, so really tell us a little bit about those grants. If yeah. You don't have to list them all, but some of those that are uh, highlights, I would say. Some were arts education. Okay. Um, some were um, animal rescue. We had... Uh, ecology groups, we had um, groups that um, help with domestic violence problems. Um, Social services in general. Exactly, so it was, it was very wide ranging and I think that kind of reflects the interests of our club because every grant is sponsored by a member of the club. Oh, wow. So when we make the awards, it's to the club but with their sponsor there nice. um, nice. presenting the check and, uh, to them. So there's a really tight relationship between the club members and the community organizations. And, and this is an annual event that you do? Twice a year. We do Twice it in the spring and fall. And how are these funded? These are funded by direct donations from our membership really? and then you know the investment as it grows. Got so. it. Okay so part of it's an endowment but mm -hmm. most of it comes from contributions then. Exactly. Individual. Yeah. Have you ever considered reaching outside of that group to uh, get assistance? Maybe have a fundraiser or something like that for the foundation? We do fundraising all the time for all kinds <laughs> of different efforts. Um, last year, we did a big fundraiser to support a water, water project in the Eastern Congo. And then just uh, maybe two weeks ago, we did a fundraiser to help with the End Polio Now campaign that Rotary sponsors internationally. Actually, I uh, wanted to hear a little bit about that because uh, there's been a little uh, rumble that it was a pretty cool <laughs> event. It, it was a very cool event. It, this is kind of what we're getting the benefit out of some new members. They've been talking to us about different ideas for fundraising. In January of last year, we did a lobster boil that was very successful. It was something we hadn't hmm. tried before. We're trying to get out of maybe the, the usual routine of things we've done in the past. So building on the success of the lobster boil, we kind of were brainstorming ideas that we could do. And we came up with this notion of pints for polio. We were looking for a lower cost entry point, something that would be interesting to a younger demographic because we see our fundraisers as social events that are great for the membership. But they're also an opportunity to expose people to Rotary, but in a less formal setting than a, a lunchtime meeting. Right. And so that, that's kind of how the genesis started. So we wanted sort of a lower cost entry point and anybody could attend. So. Got it. So tell us a little bit about the uh, Pints for Polio project or event. Um, where it was held and how many people you had. So we ended up, I think, somewhere between 150 and 200 wow. people. It was really great. What we did is we pre-sold pint glasses that were labeled Pints for Polio, and we charged people $25 a glass, which included their first fee free beverage. Okay. And um, we held it at a local um, bar, the Santa Barbara Brewing Company. Okay. And I think one of the highlights of the event is the fact that the entire uh, event was underwritten. Our members purchased the glasses that were going to be sold, and the Santa Barbara Brewing Company provided us with the venue and also the first beverage for wow. free. So, yeah, really big thanks to them for supporting the community. And it was great for us then because we could advertise the event as being every dollar you spend is used to eradicate polio. Uh -huh. so. Well, that's great. Mm -hmm. Um, how much organization did it take, time-wise, for you to actually pull this event off? I think soup to nuts. We probably start, planned it about a month in advance, right? Really? Yeah, wow. so in terms of maybe four to six weeks, ordering the glasses, which is the most time-consuming part, uh, we had 
uh, no failure to get uh, volunteers to help with this. When <laughs> we're so involved. We had, when the fair involved, we had <laughs> several members of the club who participated. And we also had the incentive, obviously, of the Gates Foundation doing the, the two for one match, really. So it was just an inc incredible opportunity right now. And so every dollar really turns into three, right? right, right. And so um, we, pl we started planning it. We worked really closely together. We coordinated with the brewery. We sold the pint glasses. We worked to engage our local Rotaract members. And then we were really fortunate because the day that we had it was the first day of Zone Institute for, for 25 and 26. Right. So we were able to also put an insert into the welcome bags of everyone attending right. that. And we had many people that actually had just arrived in Santa Barbara, checked into the Zone Institute and came over to support the event, oh, which was great. great. Yeah. Which was right, right uh, well, nearby, Fest Parker. Yes. So. So, so we had Rotarians from Hawaii, yeah. from yeah. Portland, yeah. and just kind of all around Canada. the western states. It was <laughs> wonderful. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it was that, wonderful. That, that was great. So did you figure out how much you actually earned, if, including the uh, Gates match? Mm -hmm. Well, the direct donation was $4,000. So with the matching, we're going to have $12,000 wow. toward the End Polio Now campaign, That's which great. is just awesome. All you do is um, get a cup and drink some beer. That was easy. <laughs> <laughs> I think the nice thing, too, is that it raised so much awareness. Right. And so That's there's true. so many people out there that don't know that we have not eradicated polio yet. We're close, right? right? But we still have three countries to go. So it's mm -hmm. Pakistan, Afghanistan, and Nigeria. And I think it's, it's less than 100 cases, right? But it's still here, and we're so close. But we really can't stop. We've got to continue to push. And really, it's the generous donations from Rotarians around the world, and obviously Gates, that's really going to help get us to the finish line on this. Right, right, that's true. Now, the event or idea, I understand, came from a, a different club at one point in time that you borrowed. We <laughs> have a member in our club who was previously with the Rotary Club of Austin. So okay. they had done something similar, and I believe they might have borrowed the idea from Bend, Oregon. Okay. So, I mean, it's like came all good there. ideas, you know, <laughs> yeah, they course. should be circulated. So. And in Rotary, they are. And they are. <laughs> and we actually, as part of our promotion for the event, went to our meeting of local Group 8 presidents, so they're of the nine uh, Rotary Clubs in this area, and spoke to them about the event with the idea of getting um, their members to join us. But we also ended up talking about maybe in future years doing it as a multi-club event and taking advantage of all the different breweries that are in town and the fact that, you know, kind of microbreweries are an area of interest for people. That's, so it could be... a great be, idea. Yeah. And I see it being a benefit, too, for the microbreweries because they get a lot of exposure exactly. with that. Exactly. Yeah. New people coming and joining them. Yeah. What would you say was the largest challenge from that event? Or did you see any? Well, when one of our members, and I won't say who, was walking <laughs> in with a box of glasses, they tripped. And oh. we almost lost a case. Almost. But he recovered. So. Oh, that. Yeah. So just a test. That was, yeah. that was one of the challenges. Just to see if you're paying attention, <laughs> exactly. I guess. But otherwise, I think it went... Pretty smoothly, I would say. Maybe one, when we went to sell glasses to the Rotaractors at their meeting. Oh, and they reminded their, me yeah. that they're a cashless group. So yeah. it's just cards. So oh, I didn't bring the scanner that that's night. True. So <laughs> yeah, so that was a lesson yeah. learned. We're always okay. gonna have mm -hmm. Um, a way to and take some electronic of them possibly payment. would be under the age of 21 too. So but these cut. are all young professionals, <laughs> so they're okay. Oh, they're okay. all over 21. Yeah. Okay, yeah. okay, that sounds good. Yeah. Um, so tell us uh, some of the other events that you do. Uh, I know you guys have been very active and you're talking about all these different mm -hmm. scholarships and things. <laughs> yeah, so we do, in, a, in addition to the grant program that we run twice a year, which are for local nonprofits, we also give scholarships to city college students. Oh. So um, that's usually a, a springtime event. We have distribution of warm coats, food drives, a dictionary project. It's really kind of runs the gamut, anything. And, and we're always open to people approaching us with projects. We participated very recently in the Montecito Beautification Day. So mm -hmm. I got to walk around with a big orange trash bag and <laughs> pick, pick up trash. It was, it was actually a great experience yeah, and kind yeah. of a, a team building event for us as well. So well, That's great. And how about you? Have uh, any of those events uh, really stood out for you? I think when we had we had a, a recent event, which was our hoedown. Oh, and a hoedown. that was a very unique opportunity. It was a fundraiser for the for the club, and really a great opportunity for us to come together. We also did a recent taco night, which was kind of an end <laughs> yeah. of summer. We we get together quite a bit, and we really get to know each other, 
and get to know each other's families and really learn about each other. And I think some of the best time I also spend is just one-on-one -on -one meeting fellow Rotarians um, outside of the club meetings and really learning about them and their lives and their interesting you know, work that the, each of them do. It, it's, really, it's really a special group that we have here in Montecito. That is good. It seems like, uh, well actually is the fact that outside of the meeting is when you actually get to know the other Rotarians. Because yeah. in the meeting, so. it's the program and it's, you know, it's mostly down to business part of it. So it sounds like you have quite a few uh, social events. We do, and for example, I just came here from a lecture. One of our members was giving a lecture on international policy, and so a number of us Rotarians went there to support him, and we see each other in those kind of contexts as well. So. Well, that's great. Now, um, both of you are fairly new to Rotaries, but I'm going to ask you anyways, <laughs> have, have you ever experienced what they call a Rotary moment? One, something that happened where you go, you know what, this is why I joined the organization. I think Probably the nicest one was really last week when we did the uh, grants mm -hmm. and one of the recipients actually stood up and asked all the other recipients to stand up and kind of thank the club and you just really felt how much it meant to them. I, I think especially right now there's, there's kind of an undercurrent of, you know, are we cooperating with each other in the world? Mm -hmm. And I, I think it was really meaningful in that sense to feel like you know, we were all in it together giving back to the community, so. Nice, how about you, Carrie? You know, I had a unique one. I, I think I have those moments on a daily basis, wow. uh, at least a weekly basis, but I had one over on Saturday at Zone Institute when there was an ambassador there. Uh, it was a, a, a Rotary Club president from Auburn, Steve Lease, and in his free time, uh, he is a, he works in, in volunteers with Scouts and Girl Scouts. Right. And he also has a full-time job as, as a wealth advisor. And in his free time, he likes to bake cookies. And he, his personal mission is to give out 100,000 cookies, just to make people happy. And he's given out 36,000 to date. And on the day of service, he decided that he was gonna use the kitchen at the Fest Parker, and he was gonna bake 600 cookies. <laughs> so when the Rotarians finished up their project, they would have a cookie, and he did that. And it's just very special people that Rotary attracts that really just care about others and they're just doing great things in the world. And whether it's you know do, building wells and doing water funding water projects or it's baking cookies, they're doing something. And they're, it, it's just something that always just ma amazes me, the quality of people that Rotary attracts. True. Now Steve was um, actually helping you out with the display. He was, so he had driven six hours. He also serves as a shelter box ambassador. Okay. And he carries the box and he often puts the tent up and he raises awareness for the work around the world. So this weekend he was really talking about the work right now in Mosul with the offensive as well as the work in Haiti that's ongoing oh, okay. after Hurricane Matthew. And you know he drives many hours a week just to educate scouts and communities around the state around what the organization does to really increase awareness and visibility of what Rotary and Shelterbox do together in partnership. Yeah, so there's uh, quite a few uh, partners actually like the Shelterbox, mm -hmm. and we'll probably have you back, by the way, and okay. we'll talk about Shelterbox, because <laughs> it is one of the great projects that we do. Um, as far as international, I know you did at least one international project recently with the club. Mm -hmm. Tell us about that one. So that was a Momoshu water project. There had been a water system that was damaged in the Civil War, and so what we were doing is fundraising, um, and I believe we put together about $18,000 that got multiplied wow. to be $63,000. Right. And so there, uh, we were working in conjunction with a club mm -hmm. there in the Congo, because we always mm -hmm. do a partnership kind right. of on the ground, um, which was really wonderful. We uh, rebuilt the, uh, a number of different cisterns and ran spigots from them. And then we actually have a member of our club who runs, who has his own construction business. And he flew to the Congo to do um, inspection and to give them advice on what they were doing with some of running the, the pipes. I mean, I think it was an interesting experience for him as well because um, He's used to working with maybe more equipment rather than <laughs> human labor. So, True. you know, there were people literally digging, you yeah. know, sure. yards and yards of ditches <laughs> to lay this, this pipe. But it managed to bring clean water to a number of yes. people there. So. That's great. So how does the, um, and this is one of the, I would say, shortfalls of the organization itself. 
How do you as a club find out about these projects? How do you get the buy-in and the feel? Well, it's really interesting because we have a member of our club who was uh, in his early days a Peace Corps volunteer. Okay. So he is um, very interested in finding projects for us. So he went out and kind of solicited uh, projects, and particularly with this town because we have a long-standing relationship with them. We started originally by uh, funding some uh, an edu a school for women, then built a peace marketplace, and, and so we're just continuing this relationship. And as they see our club respond, they come to us with additional requests as okay. well. So it's impacting a specific community then in yeah. the Congo. In a long-term way, good. which is really good. That is good. Yeah. That's a very so, good way to do it. Yeah. Um, future events. What do you have lined up for next projects? Well, of course, you're not done with this one. You're still working on it. <laughs> well, I still have to find <laughs> the final report yeah. on this project. So we are actually in the process of looking for new projects to okay. get it involved with right now. Okay. We're we're talking about doing a local project here okay. if we can get the right um, agencies involved to do uh, some work on a seawall to kind of beautify it with some of the local oh, schools. So that's okay. probably our local project. And then we'll probably cooperate with other clubs in terms of international projects this year. Good, so. good. Mm -hmm. No, that's, that's great. Mm -hmm. um, your members, now how do they get involved? Is it something that they bring forward? Because it sounds like you have almost every member bringing forward a scholarship. Yeah, we have, our members are very involved, whether they're either, you know, on the events committees developing some of these events or, you know, participating in the, the service projects themselves. And there's lots of opportunities for involvement in the club. And they're very much hands-on with other nonprofits in, in, in the community as well as across the world. So I think we're well, well tied in, in that community then. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I'd love to see us do something around preparedness personal preparedness mm -hmm. yeah. here, that's especially good. In, yeah. across the county. Yeah, so that's important. So idea. we're talking about some ideas now that we're Okay, oh, very good. So. Um, the incoming president of the Carpinteria Evening Club is actually, that's what he did for a long mm -hmm. time, so mm -hmm. that may be a good connection. Oh, Dan, right. Dan Flynn, mm -hmm. exactly, yeah. mm -hmm. exactly. The um, project that you did, the event, uh, Pints for Polio, mm -hmm. Do you plan on doing that again, or are you going to kind of share that with the other clubs? Because you talked about maybe Absolutely, both. we're going to do it again, <laughs> for, for okay. sure. Okay. I think Carpentry might be doing it as well, okay. whether we joined with them or not. Okay. But I, I think we should partner together. I think it would be a great event. Um, I was really happy because I look at um, kind of any event as how many people show up, but then I like to see how many people stay. And, you know, yeah. an hour yeah. after the event had officially ended, there were still... Oh, people nice. sitting around drinking out of their pint glasses and I, it made me feel good like yeah. we had really done more than just you know put together a fundraiser but we had really um, brought people together and kind of made new connections so that, that's very true and the awareness factor i mean you can't beat that but what, what you got out of that event 150 200 people that that's amazing yeah and that, we had a huge good. banner on the street so even people that didn't participate directly walked by asked us about rotary gave us a chance to share the message about, you know, what we do all together in the world. So that was really awesome. And now, the support from other Rotarians was just so sure. yeah. remarkable to the folks that came from Zone. And th I think that's one of the moments I always have, too, is whenever I'm around the world all the time, it seems like, and wherever I go, there's a Rotary Club, and just stopping in and feeling like you're at home, wherever you Very go. Very true. And it really felt that way that night. There were other local Rotary Clubs that came, and there were Rotarians from from clubs across the state and outside of the state that, that came as well. And I think that was part of the success of the event is we made a point of visiting all our local clubs directly, asking for their support, right. of course trying to sell them glasses at the same time. But I, I think it's building that sense of community beyond your individual club that right. really kind of helps build the Rotary brand and make people understand what we're really all about. So. We had, uh, with that, the Zone Institute, and by the way, the Zone includes um, all of the regions and districts of California, Arizona, Nevada, Oregon, Washington, part of Idaho, Hawaii, and, and part of Canada. Yeah. So it's a pretty area, a large area, 23 different districts. Yeah. So uh, the representation of that was quite large. That group also did a work day with Boys I was and part Girls of that. Club, which you so. were part of. Yeah, exactly. And that was, again, 500 people plus, so... You, you could see the community, the community buy-in, and the efforts that each of these Rotarians have. And that was an amazing experience, that, that work was. project day where everybody's wearing the same colored shirt and you're going out in big buses <laughs> to the Boys and Girls Club and 
by the end of the day, people are covered in blue paint or, <laughs> That's right. or sawdust, whatever it was they were working on. So, so future of Rotary for you, what, what are you thinking about after you're done being president? Have you thought about that? <laughs> for, in our club, the tradition is when you um, exit as president of the club, you can become president of the club foundation okay. for the next year. So I've got the next 12 months mapped out. Beyond that, I don't know yet. I mean, I had a fantastic time when I attended the uh, international conference True. in Seoul. Yeah. So I'm, I've got, I've begun to see what there is to Rotary beyond the local clubs, and that's definitely interesting, but it's only been two years. <laughs> I know, I know. Well, a, a past president in two and a half years, that's impressive. <laughs> How about you, Karen? Um, well, I'll be attending International Assembly in January in San Diego, uh, and then obviously Atlanta upcoming uh, in June. Um, but for our club, I think it, it's really raising awareness and expanding awareness of what the Montecito Rotary Club is all about and the projects we're involved in and how we're working to serve the community. And I think as we work to really engage more and grow our membership, it's just reaching out and touching more people and really um, bringing them in and welcoming them to the club and to learn about the incredible camaraderie and group that then fellowship that we foster and really work to. So I think that's that's personally what I would like to focus on, as well as fundraising. Yeah, <laughs> fundraising. Our fundraising. Yeah, yeah, fundraising gives you that leverage factor. Yeah. It, it <laughs> does help it does. out a lot. Mm -hmm. How do you keep members engaged? I mean, that seems to be difficult. Just um, we seem like we have a lot of projects this year that mm -hmm. that people can get involved with either service projects or we're even looking at things like a website upgrade and okay. so we're kind of trying to leverage the different talents of the people within the organization um, social events mm -hmm. uh, we have a lot of long-standing members of the club so there are kind of deep personal relationships that keep them engaged as well okay so, yeah. that sounds good it sounds like you have a plan for that and your membership, being as young as it is, uh, that, that's that's definitely impressive. You got a lot of movers and shakers working there, so I appreciate that, and I could see that uh, as your future. Yeah, mm -hmm. uh, thank you both for joining us. By the way, um, that was that was excellent. Hearing about your club, very active. Uh, sounds like you're going to be busy the whole time definitely. for most of this. <laughs> will you come visit us? At I, I will definitely come and visit <laughs> yeah. you. You bet. And with that, everybody, thank you very much. Uh, clubs like the Montecito Rotary Club are some place that you may want to take a look at and see because they are definitely making a difference in this community. And with that, thank you very much. We will see you next time.